my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. Woohoo! I'm Jen and this is Friday Sews where we talk about sewing in life and have a look down in the description box. It will tell you all that you ever wanted to know about Friday Sews and everybody that does it. And while you're down there, subscribe. Then you don't miss any of my Friday Sews. And so this week's sewing was stressful. And before I get into what I sewed, because it was stressful, I want to give you five tips that I've learned about stressful sewing and how to alleviate some of that stress. So number one, leave and come back later. Put it down, walk away from it. You know, sometimes that is the best medicine for you is come back with fresh eyes. Whatever it is that you have to tear out or seam rip or whatever, <laughs> put together again for the third, fourth, fifth, tenth time, then it does you well to walk away from it, take a breath, have a Diet Coke, have a cup of coffee, and then come back. Yeah, fresh eyes. It helps a lot. It might not take all the stress away, but it helps a lot. Number two, after you've done a really stressful project, choose a really easy one. Make a t-shirt, make a pair of pajama pants, make a quilt block, whatever you want that's easy, whatever it is, a pot holder, doesn't matter. Whatever you know is going to be an instant win for you, an absolute yes, ah, oh, it worked out, then do that. And then go on to another hard one later. But if you've been stressed out by the one you just finished, do something easy. Number three, this is kind of preemptive and always a good idea, but don't sew when you're tired. For me, that's anytime after 9 p.m. or maybe before 10 p.m. Because if I'm like in the middle of something and I just want to finish the one part, then I'll do that. But don't sew when you're tired. When you're tired, you're not paying attention as well. Uh, or <laughs> I don't know. I always make mistakes. I'm sure that's true of you too. Just don't do it when you're tired. Whether it's first thing in the morning that you're tired or the last thing at night or maybe you've had a busy day and now you, you have an hour and you finally think, oh good, it's the middle of the day and I can finally sew. Are you tired? Because if you are, you might make more mistakes than you get more accomplished. So keep that in mind. Number four, take it slow and go step by step by step. I just finished a really stressful skirt that I made. A skirt. How could that be stressful? Well, it had cargo pockets that were made a given way and um, it was stressful just trying to figure it out. But you know what I did to make it easier? I know this sounds like very rudimentary and what? Why don't you always do that? But when I look at instructions, I look at the pictures and I just roll right through and you can't always do that. What I did this past time was very carefully go slowly. I'd get it one, number one, I got done. And I'd go on to number two and number three and number four. Uh, it benefited me greatly to do that and to look at a picture and see something and think, why was that? I did that. Uh, I went back and looked two or three times because I saw something on the illustration. Actually, it was for another view. So it's good though that I went back and I thought, did I miss a step? Did I miss a step? Yeah. Go slow, read the instructions thoroughly. A lot of times I make the thing in my head before I actually get sewing. And so I think that's a good idea. If you think through the order of operations and if you read through your instructions so you know what to expect, that really, it saves a whole lot of stress. And then number five is probably the best one and my favorite. Call a friend, text a friend, FaceTime a friend, Zoom a friend that sews. And let them tell you all day long how amazing you are, how you sew the most beautiful things, and how you are just so talented and so skilled. And they look up to you and all those things. 
let them tell you those things. Take it all in and then rant and then let them tell it all to you again, how amazing you are. Because man, I'll tell you what, that encouragement is, is worth more than gold. It is priceless and it will help to get you through those stressful times. So those are five ways that I have found that you can decrease or eliminate in some instances the stress in your stressful sewing. So let me go on to what I've been sewing this week. I finished up Simplicity 8640. I made this from a batik rayon, a rayon batik, and I wasn't happy with it. And you know, every time I make this, it depends on the fabric. It really does as to how it's going to turn out. And this time I, I thought about it later and I thought it has a center back seam and I took that in. What I probably should have done was do two back fisheye darts. And if I run into the problem again, I will do that. But I ended up um, taking it in through, uh, through the side seam, but only from about the waist up. I lowered the pockets. I put the armhole seams in and I ended up going back in and taking even more out of the back center back seam. And it fits funny, funny. I worried all day yesterday uh, or most of the day and it doesn't bother me to wear it, but I don't know, there's just something off about it. Like one of the things is that when I wear it, I've got these little places right here that just kind of want to poof out. I have no idea what that's about. And to be honest, I went in, took it in a little more here and I thought, no, it's, I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> it's fine. It's going to have to be fine. So there's that. And then, uh, what was the other thing? I think that has, I think all these fit things have to do with the fact that I gave it a V neckline, a soft V neckline, and I think that threw the fit off. I don't know. I, I worked at it and worked at it and worked at it. And finally I said, okay, good enough. We're going to call it good at this point. So I have a beautiful dress. Uh, it's not the dress I expected, but it's still a beautiful dress and I'll be able to wear it. So it's very comfortable. I love that dress but use rayon if you make it or something drapey because yeah, just do that. The other thing I made was Simplicity 9924. And I did this this week because I had previously cut it out. I got the pattern fairly recently. I think it's from this year actually. Uh, let's see, yep, 2024. Cute skirt, very cute skirt. Um, it has, um, belt loops so you can wear a belt or they have a tie that you can make and also it has variations on cargo pockets but these are not your standard cargo pockets let me get to that in a second what I want to tell you about this is it is not it is not for a beginner don't don't try this if you're a beginner and you don't have anybody to help you because you will cry <laughs> I'm not kidding even though I took this very slowly, went step by step. Number one, it has a fly front zipper, which I hate those. I just, what is it with that? I can't ever get it right. It's not difficult, but I put it together. I didn't look right to me. I tore it all out and ended up putting it back together exactly the same way. So that was kind of foolish, but stressful. It created stress. So I ended up, um, doing the pockets exactly as they said to do them, but they have a gusset in them so that they're able to hold more. Well, it's a fashion skirt. I'm not sure. I'm not going camping in this skirt. You know, I'm not going hiking. I'm not going, this isn't the apocalypse where I'm going to go run around in this skirts and I'm going to need 20 things to put in my cargo pockets. Yeah, I honestly, I think I'm going to take them off. I think I'm just going to take them off, even though I spent a lot of time doing them and I spent a lot of time making buttonholes, putting buttons on, all of that. The thing that I didn't think was gonna work was the waistband. I did something I never do with this and that was sew a 5 8 inch seam allowance. I know, that sounds like completely crazy. Why don't you always do that, Jen? 
because I'm always in between sizes. And so I use a half inch seam allowance and it works great. I probably could have done that and it would have been fine, but I made no adjustments to the pattern at all. And the waistband, although it is snug, <laughs> it is snug, it's not so tight that it's cutting me in half. And it makes me think as I wear it, because I made this out of a home deck um, cotton, I think it's 100% cotton. If it's not, it's got very little synthetics in it. Um, but uh, it's gonna grow because that's what happens with a natural fiber, especially like denim and things like that. They grow as you wear them. And I think this waistband, although it's snug, it's not tight, it's just snug. At first I thought, am I gonna be able to get this on? What was I thinking? And then I zipped it up and I thought, oh, <laughs> it's fine. Probably would have been a, be a better um, thing if I had used a half inch seam allowance. It would have been a little less snug, but I went with five eighths and I based that on all of the finished garment measurements and I'm glad I did because it worked. So very cute skirt. I'm very happy with that part that it fits and I like the fabric, but I'm not wild about those pockets. Mm -mm. No, and I have a couple of back pockets uh, that I want to put on it, but if I put them on now, it's, I can't, I have to, how do I say this? It's those cargo pockets come up high enough that they interfere with the area where I would put these. So if I take the cargo pockets off, I'll be fine. And it'll be a cute skirt no matter whether I do that or not. But uh, not for beginners. Pockets have gussets. So if you're a hiker, do this in some kind of like parachute fabric and make the pockets like they are and you will be set. That was that. Now currently I have Vogue 9122 on my table. And I wanted a shift dress. I wanted something easy, something not stressful, which is one of my tips, make something really easy. I have wanted to make this for a while. This pattern is from 2015, I think. No, 8, 15, 18, I think it's 15. I can't see anymore, I don't know what it is. Anyway, I've wanted to make it for a while and I don't want to make it as a jumper with a turtleneck under it. Obviously I live in Florida, but I wanted to make it just as a regular dress. Well, I had this Navy rayon and it is so sheer. It's so lightweight and sheer and you can see straight through it. So I thought, what can I do with this? Can, do I have enough of it to self line it? Well, not quite. But that's okay because I had this. And this is a rayon that I have never used and I don't think I ever would use it because it doesn't look good on me. It looks terrible. Um, it's yellow in it, which is odd because I've always worn yellow really well because I'm a warm spring, I think, or I used to be. I don't know. I wish my hair would just go gray altogether so I'd be able to tell. So. Let me see if I can put this together. I've sewn the back fisheye darts in it so that those might not line up correctly to show you, but that's gonna be my lining. So you can't see through it anymore. Pretty nice, huh? Uh, now that I look at it, you can kind of see <laughs> the flowers through it, whatever. You know what, I'll, I'll make it work. Uh, so that's what I'm wor working on right now. And it's so simple. It is so simple. This is the front. And uh, it's just really three pattern pieces. And that's it. So there's that, the front, which is great. And then the, um, the other front, the lining front, I have pinned together, but I have not sewn yet. And the top of it, I had enough for the for the lining of the thing. It does call for a lining. So that's kind of nice because uh, your pattern will tell you how to do it. Really simple dress. Two French darts um, and then that piece and a zipper up the back. I don't even know if I'll do the zipper up, up the back because if the uh, neckline is too tight, I'll just cut it a little wider and I'll be all set. So, 
I'm sure I will end up doing some variation on the burrito method for the armholes and the whole thing. I'll tell you about it when it, I get it done. But that's about it for the sewing. In terms of life, it has been raining nonstop and that's okay. Gives me lots of time to come in here and sew. I've been taking it easy because I've had a busy couple of weeks, you know, uh, being away and just doing all kinds of things. I'm about to go back into that whole house renovation thing with my daughter and her RV. She has some projects she wants to accomplish in there and they are going to require uh, paintbrushes and saws and stuff like that. So that's going to be interesting. I've never done anything with an RV in terms of uh, like tearing out fixtures and putting things in and laying flooring and building a bed and all that kind of thing. I haven't done that before, so we'll see. And that's pretty much life. I mean, hmm, I haven't really been doing much else. I'd love to be in the pool, but I'm not. So that is it for life. Um, I'm going to move on into a little bit of Jesus at this point. And so if that's not for you, then thank you so much for being here. Thank you for watching. I always appreciate you spending some time with me and uh, I'll talk to you in the comments. And so until next time, take care. Okay. If you've stuck around for a little bit of Jesus, well, I am glad that you did. Um, I was listening to some praise music this morning and thinking about a friend of mine who suffers uh, from bipolar disorder. She's up and then she's down and then she's up and then she's down. And she gets a lot done when she's up, but she suffers when she's down. And that, you know, her medications have been all over the place trying to get her even. And so she stays even for a while and then it's all up and down again. For me, I only go straight across then I fall and dip uh, into that black pit of despair. Now I haven't done that in a long time because I've been on medication for a long time. And it's amazing. Um, when I went on medic medication, I finally, I realized that everyone saw on the outside who I knew I was on the inside. And I had the ability to filter and not have emotion blow through me like a wind. That was amazing. Okay, but anyway, so I was listening to this praise music this morning and thinking about my wonderful friend. And I heard some lines that I thought would speak to her. And one of them was, can the broken be made new again? Yes, it can. Oh, yes, it can. Does he still mend hearts? Does he still break chains? Yeah, yeah, he does. He keeps his promises and he keeps his covenant. Right there it is. This is the God we serve who is always faithful, who never goes away, who always shows up. He is available to us right now. Anytime. He's right there. That kind of blows my mind. I don't know about you, but that kind of blows my mind that I don't have to get on my knees or I don't have to go into a closet. I don't have to go anywhere to be able to pray. He's right there all the time anytime. I just think that's amazing. Okay. And my prayer card is from Psalm 3, 3 it says, but you, O Lord, are a shield around me, my glory, the one who lifts my head high all around me. Wow. I, I, I keep being speechless here because I, it's too big. You know, it's such a big concept. He's right here. He's all around us. He is a shield protecting us. He's standing behind us, making the enemy deadly afraid. <laughs> he is faithful. He keeps his promises. He keeps his covenant. I will leave that with you today. And uh, I guess that's it for now for me. And I hope you have a great weekend. I hope you got some major wonderful sewing done. And I will see you next time.